So why do we worry about dogs' teeth and dental health in dogs? Well, I'll tell you why. Because dogs' gums, because they don't brush, they sometimes get gum infections. That can lead to severe inflammation of the gums and it can lead to pain. So how do you know if your dog has bad teeth or has gum infections? Well, you have to look. So on this little one, toy breeds are the most sensitive to developing tartar and bad and have gums that just aren't very healthy. And you'll see tartar, it's yellow brownish, and it's it's right up against the gums, just like that. And then sometimes what happens is the gums will turn red right on the gum line. And what that means is you could have gum infection and you can have abscesses developing. And Michelle, what are some of the causes? What can uh, gum infections and abscesses lead to? Well, like you said, their gums get really red. When their gums get red, the gums can start to bleed. And so if their gums are bleeding, then the bacteria in the mouth that are causing the tartar and the abscess can enter the bloodstream. And once you're in the bloodstream, you can go anywhere in the body, including the kidneys, the liver, the heart, and that can cause further problems. Yeah, that that bacteria gets in the bloodstream and it can cause infections and it can cause even cause the heart valves to become a little wrinkled. So you just want to make sure if your dog has nice bright teeth, and we'll try to show you that in the video, and the gums are nice and pink and there's no tartar, then just brushing might work. But if your dog has tartar and it has built up and it's pressing against the gum lines, then you may need to have your dog anesthetized and then the teeth scaled and then polished. And that really helps with dental health. And that's what we're going to show you in this video. So another thing we do is when, if your dog's older, or if you just decide you want to screen your dog for to make sure all its organs are percolating and working, then you can have blood work done. And blood work will show you that all, everything's working real well. And most blood values should be right in the middle. That's low and that's high, and this is good. If your dog has a kidney issue or a liver issue, they're not gonna do so well under anesthetic. And if their blood count's low, they're not gonna be able to carry enough oxygen for the anesthetic. So we wanna make sure there's enough red blood cells to carry the oxygen, and the kidney and liver are working well. That's mainly what we look at. So it looks like we're ready to go. So what we're doing is we're going to give Ginger some anesthetic. And in order to do that, we have to shave up a little spot on her arm so that she can get her IV of propofol. Why do we have to anesthetize animals to have dentals and have dental cleaning? Because animals will not stay still and they won't let us do the, the, the good cleaning it takes okay. under the gum line in order to get rid of the inflammation and bacteria. So she just got her propofol and she's already sleepy. It works pretty immediately. Very, very, very groggy. And we're gonna go ahead and put a tube in her. That air return is a positive response that we've entered the trachea. So the ginger's under anesthetic now, and there's the tracheal tube going all the way up into the tubes, which lead to the anesthetic machine, which delivers the oxygen and the anesthetic. And right below that, you'll hear the beeping of the monitor that shows that she has 95% oxygen and her heart rate's 93. So we're ready to start our dentistry. We wear some safety equipment, some protective eyewear, some mask work, because sometimes their breath is really stinky. And we also wear gloves. Some of the instruments that we like to use for these guys have something called a tartar cracker that I'm going to use on her teeth. I have a hand scaler. And I have a probe to check for pocketing, just like our own dentist does at the office when they're checking the, around each of our teeth. We do the same thing to make sure that we're not missing some sort of pocket of an abscess 
or a tooth that could be unhealthy. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to probe around her teeth and just check for pockets prior to knocking all the tartar off and causing the gums to bleed because I don't want to release a lot of bacteria if I don't have to. I'm just checking under that gum line, seeing if it sinks in in any spot. So our pocketing actually doesn't feel that bad, but as you can see, the tartar buildup on these teeth, as I'm barely probing, the gums are starting to bleed. So that tells you these guys really need to be cleaned. The gums are super inflamed and they bleed really easily. So it's really time that we knock this tartar off or else that bacteria is gonna go into that bloodstream. Right now I'm trying to knock off these, these chunks of tartar with my tartar crackers. See that piece of tartar that just came off right there? That's why they're called tartar crackers. So now that we've knocked off most of that tartar, we're gonna use an ultrasonic scaler to completely clean the tooth. And it's just a very light feather tip motion. As you can see, that's gonna further clean that tooth. We don't stay on the tooth for very long because you can crack the enamel. Very, very light feather tip, only using the side of the scaler. Also, as we're scaling, just go slightly beneath the gum line. And again, it's just gonna get all that tartar that we didn't able to see or crack off. And look how clean her teeth look already. If you also notice, she's bleeding a lot less. The gum's starting to feel healthier already. She's been under anesthesia for just 10 minutes and her heart rate has dropped to 71 and her blood oxygen is still up at 98, which is great. She might be a tiny little dog, but she's a tough one. So besides cleaning this part of the tooth that most of us can see when we lift the gum, it's also really important that we clean the inside of the tooth that's right here, okay? So we're also gonna scale this and make sure we get all of that harder off as well. You know, this is probably a really sensitive part of their mouth on the inside next to their tongue. And if a dog wasn't asleep and under anesthesia, they probably wouldn't let you clean that part of it. But it's just as important to clean this part as the other part because it had a lot of tartar on it. So Isabel is constantly watching Ginger to make sure Ginger's okay in her anesthetic. We don't always have a specific technician to do this, and that's why we rely also on people circulating and checking in and also our instruments keeping track. And what but is, if, because she's breathing a little harder, I'm just going to offer anesthetic uh, ice cream to a little bit more. So she just went up a little bit, huh Isabel? Yes. And then what is what is this thing, Isabel? What is this big hose right there? It's to keep the dog or uh, the pet warm. Oh, isn't it cute? Yes. It's like a big heated yes. air mattress. See how easy it comes out? After we extract the little movable inflamed incisors on the lower jaw, we, we're going to give her a little painkiller and some antibiotics to go home so she doesn't get any kind of infection. So now that we've completely knocked the tartar off of the teeth, it's important that we polish the teeth, just like our own dentist does. After they've cleaned our teeth and scaled them, we're going to use a polisher on the teeth as well. That way we can fill in any parts of the enamel that might have weakened due to the, to the scaling. both sides of her teeth clean. She looks so much better. There's no more tartar buildup. She had the loose teeth that were bothering her gums removed. She's been polished. And now one of the last steps we do is we do fluoride. And if any of you have been to the dentist, like my children, they put that foam tray in your mouth and you have to hold it in there for about a minute. Well, these guys are asleep. So it makes it really simple. We put the fluoride directly in, make sure it's making contact with all the teeth. They look like a little rabid puppy. But it sits there for about a minute, and then I will wipe it out. Some of you may be wondering, what if I want to brush my dog's teeth? How do I brush my dog's teeth? Well, now that Ginger's teeth are clean, there's no excess tartar on them, I can show you how to brush your teeth while she's asleep. 
And we're going to use a little enzymatic toothpaste that's appropriate for dogs. You cannot use human toothpaste on your dog. They'll get sick. You have to use doggy toothpaste, okay? And I have a dog toothbrush. Now, if I was doing a big Labrador, I'd use the big end, but we're doing ginger, so we're going to use the itty bitty tiny end, which you can also use on cats. Again, we're only going to do the outside of the teeth. And just like you would your own teeth. Just give it a nice brushing. And if you can do this with your dog, every day, every other day, you will slow down the buildup of tartar. You know, we're able to clean our teeth and do all the scaling and the brushing because we're under the direct supervision of a doctor when we do it. And also because we uh, have our license with uh, the state of California. We turned off the anesthetic. She's on oxygen only. Isabel's checking her temperature to make sure that she's normal. She should be at least 99.5 to 100 degrees. And we've also removed the air out of the cuff on her tooth so that she can start breathing with the room air. The agent we use gets metabolized pretty quickly. She's coming up. She's very awake. We're gonna go ahead and pull that tube out. Oh, she's awake. Good morning. Good morning. Wake up, Ginge. Well, how long is this after the surgery? Ten minutes or? About five minutes. Five minutes and she's looking pretty good, yep. huh? She's blinking. She's awake already. So how long is this after surgery? You mean 15 minutes? 15 minutes. She can sort of walk just a little wobbly. Oh, look at her. She's <laughs> walking around a little bit. She's a little drunk. Well, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration by our technician, Michelle Bundros. She did an excellent job explaining what goes into a dental cleaning and why it's important to have your dog's teeth at least examined and see if they do need one. Other ways that clients and I keep my dog's teeth clean are to have them chew. Um, raw meaty bones um, are good to keep dog's teeth clean. It's important to remember you never give your dogs baked or barbecued bones or real hard bones from the pet store. Sometimes they have the big old dog femurs. Uh, dogs can crack their teeth on those and sometimes a dog, if they're really in a hurry, they can swallow big pieces of hard bone and cause an obstruction. Also, some dogs in their haste to eat the whole darn bone will get all that calcium and phosphorus in their intestine and acts just like cement and they'll get really constipated. So feeding raw meaty bones can be dangerous, but um, I use uh, raw chicken wings and I also use, uh, and I use them frozen and I also use chicken thighs frozen and uh, that way when they chew on those things then uh, they can knock all that tartar off. So remember, if your dog wants to eat too rapidly, don't use big bones. Um, and if you're going to use raw chicken wings and raw chicken uh, thighs, then you can get them from the supermarket and just warm them up a little bit and feed them. And sometimes that will really help knock that tartar off. But if uh, your dog's not a chewer, then you can brush them using a tooth and toothpaste and a toothbrush for dogs and cats couple times a week and also you can use a little gauze pad and uh, with some baking soda on it or the appropriate toothpaste for your pet and if you can do it a couple times a week it might really help well check out my website dog dish diet um, I talk in my book dog dish diet I talk about um, feeding dogs um, raw meaty bones and in my book feed your pet to avoid the vet I also talk about slow cooking for dogs and cats and I feed my cats uh, raw meat a couple of times a week um, because or some cooked meat because I think the carnivore in them needs that and I think that helps their teeth as I watch them chew it also helps keep their teeth a little cleaner and exercise their gums well anyway have a great day